This is a 49-year-old lady who presented with a left breast mass. So she was basically worked up, the, the mass was found in examination, she was worked up, had imaging that showed suspicious findings. She then went ahead and had a, a biopsy of both the breast and the auxiliary lymph nodes, both of which showed high-grade invasive ductal cancer. The receptors were estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor negative and HER2 positive. She then proceeded to mastectomy and her uh, end stage was T2, N3, so she had fairly substantial disease and she's now being recommended adjuvant chemotherapy with her to directed therapy. So I think the key thing about this case is that um, if she had perhaps been seen in a multidisciplinary clinic, she might have been recommended preoperative chemotherapy with her to direct therapy her to direct therapy, which is something that we use routinely for these larger cancers, particularly when they're no positive. As far as this lady's prognosis, it's a little bit hard to know. Um, in general, HER2 positive cancers are very aggressive. They do have a propensity to metastasize fairly early following diagnosis. However, with the use of chemotherapy in combination with trastuzumab and now more recently with pertuzumab, uh, many of these patients are being cured of their disease even though they have positive lymph nodes and a large cancer. So in this lady, it's hard to know. Um, if we had given her preoperative treatment with chemotherapy and HER2-directed therapy, we could have used her response to that therapy as a marker for prognosis because we know, particularly with estrogen receptor negative HER2 positive cancers, they tend to respond uh, in, in a high percentage of cases and patients who have a complete response to the preoperative treatment actually have a very favorable outcome. So in this lady, it's a little bit hard to know, but I think with aggressive adjuvant uh, systemic therapy, uh, she actually could be fine with and not have any evidence of recurrence. If she does have a recurrence, it would be likely to occur within the next four to five years. So once she gets to five years, she'd be pretty unlikely to have a recurrence from this cancer. As far as uh, the story of HER2 targeted therapy, so the HER2 receptor was actually discovered back in the 1990s and was associated with very aggressive cancers with a high metastatic potential. However, uh, just uh, shortly after her, the HER2 receptor was discovered, the antibody trastuzumab was developed to basically uh, target the HER2 receptors on these cancer cells. Now, interestingly, trastuzumab has very little activity on its own as a single agent, but when you give it with chemotherapy, there's quite marked synergy between trastuzumab and the chemotherapy. So the pivotal trial that was done was a trial for patients with metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer who were treated with chemotherapy alone or chemotherapy plus trastuzumab, and the addition of trastuzumab, trastuzumab markedly improved outcome for these patients and really has been the standard of care, not just for metastatic breast cancer, but also in the early stage setting since that time point. Now, one of the interesting things about the, the HER2 story was that at the time that trastuzumab was developed, we really weren't really savvy about the idea of targeted therapies. So when a new drug came along, we would use it on every type of breast cancer, regardless of what subtype the, the, the patient had. Um, however, Dennis Slayman, who discovered trastuzumab, was uh, very uh, to, spoke to the FDA and basically said that this drug would only work in HER2 positive cancers, um, which it's good that he did because we subsequently did a trial in patients with HER2 normal metastatic breast cancer where trastuzumab didn't improve outcome at all. So since that time, we've had a number of uh, other agents come down the pipeline. So pertuzumab is another antibody that tar targets HER2 but a slightly different uh, domain of the HER2 receptor compared to trastuzumab. And what we know in the metastatic setting is that the combination of trastuzumab and pertuzumab with chemotherapy has had very profound uh, impact on outcome, such that women who get that type of that regimen can actually expect to live for a median of almost five years, which is a huge move forward from where we were before. Pertuzumab has also been shown to increase the likelihood of getting a complete response to trastuzumab and chemotherapy in the preoperative setting, and it's very commonly used in that area. Uh, we also have trastuzumab DM1, which is a conjugate of trastuzumab with a chemotherapy moiety, which has been shown to be effective in metastatic breast cancer for patients who've had prior trastuzumab. And then the most recent drug is called naratinib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor that targets HER2 um, and the other HER, HER receptors and has been just recently approved for extended adjuvant therapy for patients with HER2 positive breast cancer. Uh, obviously, we now know that there are a number of different subtypes of breast cancer, so it's very important that we 
determine what type of subtype of breast cancer a patient has. And the way we do that is by measuring estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and HER2 new. Um, <clears throat> HER2 is measured either by immune histochemistry or by in situ hybridization. Either method is reasonable. Sometimes in the event of an equivocal immune histochemical test, we'll use in situ hybridization to kind of determine whether the cancer is HER2 positive or not. So that's a very, very important thing to, uh, to find out for your patients because it really it gives them the opportunity of uh, having the option of these life-saving HER2-directed therapies to improve their outcome.